Hello and welcome to another how-to video. My name is Ditec, C2 at DVS, and today, before we start anything, I really need to tell you guys about the DVS app. So, if you're a smartphone user, like everybody here is, simply go to your native app store and download the DVS app. Once it's downloaded for iOS or Android, this allows you to do online storage calculations, log into your app and then place orders via quotes, um, product catalog, download all the manuals and we've done a lot of manual research on this so you can search for a manual, download it so it's always stored on your phone for easy reference if you don't have a signal um, and it will also give you notification of new content, new products, new competitions etc moving forward. Lots and lots of development going in here in the background so please go to the app store, download DVS app and give us some feedback. So that's point one out the way. That's definitely a reinstaller thing. So the second point of today is, I want to show you what a decoder is. We get asked a lot of times, many, many times, what is a decoder and how can it be used for me or my customer? So, before we start, we do a decoder, or Hike Vision do a decoder, they do a one channel, a four channel, an eight channel, a 12 channel, and a 16 channel. So the channel counts, I mean by that, a HDMI out. So the most popular model is the ds dash 6904 UDI so four HDMI outputs and they can be programmed via the network so via its own web browser or via a keyboard or even via Hike Central so many different ways it can be used the simplest way to think of this is a decoding device that takes the streams from IP devices so whether it's IP cameras directly MVRs DVRs and then displays them via the HDMI output so the 6901 UDI so you can see on the back, sorry on the front, one HDMI output, one BNC output, and one VGA. Those are 4K, so the HDMI is 4K. So depending on the resolution of your cameras, then we'll, we'll show you the table later. So for reference, there is a table which shows us how many cameras each of these devices can decode and how many cameras per split screen. So one 4K HDMI output on there, so you could roughly get uh, about 16 1080p cameras decoded to this device on a split screen so really really popular cost effective the second one i want to show you or run through is this 6904 udi so it's a four channel hdmi output so on the back you can see the four hdmi output two bnc so cvbs with a dvi or this one's got a hdmi input and a dvi input mains powered and you can see on the front you've got network connection with a USB and an SFP if you want it um, for fiber connection. Essentially, um, rack mount device, four HDMI outputs. So again, four times as powerful as this single unit. And what you can do on this is have two of the outputs can be 4K. So if you've got um, output two and four could be 4K. So two 4K outputs or four 1080p HD outputs. And I'll show you how to program that shortly when we use the web interface. So a four channel decoder, rack mount. We've also got the 6908 UDI decoder. So again, very similar rack mount, very similar front on there. So you've got the uh, network connections, two fiber ports, USB for upgrading. And then on the back, you've got mains powered, eight HDMI inputs, and you've got the DVI and VGA, some alarm inputs, outputs, mains powered, and video out and audio out are done via the plug-in connectors there because the back plane is now getting full. And that's the same with the 12 channel and the 16 channel decoder. You then go to this uh, type of D connector where it comes off as a fly lead and you connect your audio and your BNC outputs through these. So again, eight HDMI outputs, you can have eight at 1080p, or you can have it at uh, four of them can be 4K in the remaining 1080p. So again, really, really powerful device. Again, they do go up in cost, so the higher you go through it, all the way up to the 6916 UDI, that'll be at the top end of the cost scale, um, but again, the most powerfulest, and depending on how your video wall looks, so if you're running a video wall for your client, so it could be a, a CCTV control room in a town centre, it could be an estate, it could be a monitoring centre, you know, these decoders will be absolutely fundamental to the operation of that video wall. So still confused what a decoder does and how it works? Okay, let's try and clarify this for you. So you come with me, I'm gonna put you by here, and 
I'm gonna draw something for you. So hopefully you'll see what I mean. Okay, so, and it would help if I had a pen that worked, right? That one doesn't work. Uh, great, and now I don't have a pen. Ah, oh, there we are, there's one. Okay, so this is my network. Okay, and you've got to excuse my drawing. I'm not the most uh, gifted when it comes to drawing. So, what I can do is have a decoder there. So, 69XXUDI, and there's my network connection. I can have multiple decoders. DS69UDI. And then off here, I can have my monitors. One, two, three. That could be a larger one. Okay, and on this side of the network, I can have a keyboard. A PC. Web. Or. High Central. So, what I'm trying to show here is this. So let me just take you a little bit closer so you can see. So effectively, you can have your decoders all connected to your network with your various monitors. And again, don't, don't, don't pay too much attention to the actual drawing. All these decoders sit on your network. Your network then connects in a keyboard. So whether it's the 1200, the 1600 Ki, the 1105, the 1105 Ki keyboard, the new keyboard. You can have a PC running a web browser that allows you to program these. Because if it's a one-off, and these video walls will always remain fixed. Um, so you don't need to interact with them. You just need to permanently display videos. The PC with a web browser is the most cost effective, very easy to set up. Once you set it up, those will stay fixed until you go into the web browser and then reset them. But again, keyboard to interact with them directly, PC web to set them and leave them, or Hike Central using this keyboard. So the keyboard logs into Hike Central and therefore you get the full power of the smart wall function within Hike Central using the keyboard. So hopefully, that makes some sort of sense to you why you'd use that and how that would work again ignore my artistic skills i was never that gifted but it kind of makes sense right um so what i'll do now is i'm gonna go and move you back to here i'm gonna go and focus on this 6901 udi unit we're gonna put this on the network We've got a massive screen there which the camera can see. So I'm gonna um, point the camera to that massive screen there and I'm gonna show you how to program this via the web browser so you have a permanently fixed view and then how you can change that. And then I'll show you how a keyboard can be used to directly control this. And if we got time, I'll also give you a quick overview of how you can log into Hike Central and also use this keyboard. So let me transfer you over to the PC, stay tuned, okay? Okay, so. These are the decoder, the decoder, the decoder uh, data sheets. You can get these from the Hike Vision website. Um, they, there are other ones like the 6, 9, 10, 12, and 16, etc. So the ones we're just going to quickly focus on are the 091, uh, 6901, 6904, and 6908 UDI. They're the most popular models. Now, they have been revised to the B models. So I'm just showing you the latest spec sheets. So you can browse through these at your own pleasure. But basically... Um, 24 megapixel camera, one channel. So it would decode 24 meg camera, one channel. 12 meg, two channels. 8 megapixel, 
four channels and then like i say all the way up to 16 channels at 1080p and that's a split screen so it'll decode that up to a 16-way split so to get that you'd have to have a 16-way split at 1080p um you can see the layout so you've got the video out hdmi output the front pane with the alarm input outputs uh, audio in out plus the uh, lan port etc and again if we look at the other spec sheets so this is the 904. So the B models have had a slight revision. So if I zoom it in a bit, they've removed the, uh, essentially all of the ones that did have the older style ones that had the switch built into the front. Now that's been removed. It was, let's say, pretty useless anyway. Um, so it's just been revised to remove that. But you can see the decoding capacity here. So four HDMI outputs, um, 4K, only for odd interface. So it's one, three, etc. I got it wrong. I said two and uh four earlier i meant the odd one so it's like one and three odd um not evens um and again so they can be 1080p or or 4k depending on what your needs are and what monitor you've got connected to that again you can have it can decode up to 72 channels per decoding unit so 720p uh can be uh, it can decode 72 channels at 720p or 36 channels at 1080p 20 channels at three you can see all the way up to two channels at 24 meg so that's the 6904 and then you go through there front plate back plate and then what the what they are etc the dimensions and again same with the 6908 so as you go through them they got more powerful of course so you can see this one will do four 24 megapixel cameras. The 24 megapixel cameras are the large pan of view cameras. Um, that's really the, the the models we're doing in 24 megapixel. Although there is a 36 megapixel model, uh, a 32 megapixel model as well. Um, I'll find out about that because it's not actually listed. I guess that's probably a special firmware. But this one would do 64 channels at 1080p, eight channels at 12 meg, 16 channels at eight meg, and there the split. So whereas the 6901 would only do a split screen of up to 16, these can do a split screen of up to 36 per screen now. Um, so again, uh, more uh, resource available for the decoding. Now, one thing I really wanna point out, which has caught a few people out in the past, this is total decoding capacity. This isn't per video output. This is across the entire unit. So across all of the eight monitors connected, it will decode 64 channels at 1080p, not per individual HDMI output, as some people have taken up to mean. So hopefully that has cleared that up for you. And then you can see front plate, again, no switch, back plate, plus all the descriptions and dimensions. So pretty straightforward, you can go and read them. And again, all the way up to the 6916 UDI, and that will be twice as powerful again as the 6908. And you can put multiples on a site, like I drew earlier. It's not one per site. You can have multiples per site controlled by the same software, keyboard, or individually by their web browsers. So it's a very simple thing to do. Okay, so stay tuned. I'm gonna transfer you over to the web browser now, and I'm going to show you a really quick and simple way of how to program this um, decoder via the web if all you want is a permanently um, or very um, semi-permanent screen and don't have to interact with it, you know, or, or very rarely have to interact with it. So that's the most simplest, very cost-effective because it's free. So stay tuned and I'll transfer you over. Okay, so the decoder has been put back on the network. We've opened up the web browser, so just simply type the web address of the unit that you're looking to log into. Log in with your credentials that you have set. This is my credentials. So first thing you need to do is go to configuration. So make sure under system, under maintenance, oh sorry, basic information, make sure your firmware is on the latest firmware. So on the UK portal or the EU portal, go to the decoder 690, choose the appropriate firmware that's the latest and update your decoder. It's important that you update your decoder with the latest firmware because this will always improve the improve the functionality, um, the cooperation between Hike Central, keyboards, etc. So always make sure that your device is updated to the latest firmware, more so than ever critically important with a decoder. So once we've done that, we've got the usual time settings, so we can stick the time settings in there, maintenance, default, uh, debug, etc. Network, set your appropriate network settings that you need for your network. 
decoding configuration. So the stream configuration, always leave ticked auto switch stream type. The reason I ticked that is because if you add in cameras either directly or from a source, an NVR source, and your maximum decoding capacity is say four channels at eight megapixel. Unless you use the auto switch stream type, um, that'll allow you to use the substream on the product anyway. But you'll find the more cameras you add in. So if you're trying to add like five cameras at uh, eight megapixel, it won't allow you because it's above the decoding resource. So always make sure that you s enable the auto switch stream type is on i think it's on by default now and make sure you click save because that does have a big impact on the resource availability when you're viewing it especially on a 16-way split screen you don't need them to be 8 megapixel you can take the substream because on a large screen 16-way split you don't need them all to be 8 megapixel so they can be reduced down to the substream Transparent channel. This is an, more of an old uh, technique, but this allowed us to connect the joystick, uh, a physical joystick, um, wired in, not an IP one. This is sort of predates the touchscreen joysticks, but a physical output, so RS45 output from a joystick to a decoder, which then translated to the RS45 output on the encoder or DVR, which then did the PTZ control command. So again, you can click modify, Type RS45, RS45, type the IP address of the source, the port number, username and password, and that will link through to give you the PTZ control from a RS45 physically connected keyboard to the decoder, and then mostly to an encoder and its PTZ output. Synchronize output settings, I can click down, it'll synchronize the outputs. And then personalized configuration. Now, when decoding ends, show a blank screen or the last grab frame. And when streaming fails, no network signal or last frame. So it's up to you how you do it. We'll just leave it as the default. Security control, enable SSH, which is more of a debug. HTTPS, and enable SADP, and then the digest basic function. Okay, so very simple setup. Now, under video wall configuration, this is how we assign the video, the outputs to a segment. So you can see that if I had a 16-way decoder, I could simply drag in these outputs um, across where I wanted them. So let's say I've got three outputs connected, a BNC, VJ, and HDMI for um, hypothetically speaking. So let's change the layout to two by two and click. So I'm gonna drag HDMI one here, VJ over there, and BNC over here. Now this is not the grid format of, you know, when I add a CCTV product in a minute and the video wall tab, this isn't the tiled format. This isn't saying this is how my tiled format will look on the monitor. It's a way of you assigning the outputs to your monitors connected so you have a logical view of the connected, of the connected set out. If I select the HDMI and click right click, resolution configuration, you can see there I can set the appropriate resolution that matches my monitor. Um, whether it's LCD, LED, and I can batch configure it. So if they're all going to show um, 16 outputs, we'll all show 4K or 1080p. Select them all, click OK, and it'll batch configure all those outputs. Now, don't forget, it's the odd outputs um, which will give you the 4K or the rest of them will be 1080p. So again, with the VJ, right-click resolution configuration, and you can set the appropriate resolution for the VGA, BNC, you can set PAL or NTSC depending on what region you exist in. Okay, so we're happy we set those up now. You can see here, I've added a picture in picture um, into our video recording, so that's our big video wall. So the blue screen currently shows no decoding, so we're currently showing nothing that's been decoded to it, but it's a way of me showing you when I add a device in and drag it across, you'll see that monitor change. So it's a nice picture in picture of how this works. Okay, so under video wall, we're going to add in a a DVR and an NVR. So on the bottom here, we've got add. So I can add a URL. So I can add the device URL like RTSP, um, URL, area name, and encrypt stream, etc. But we're not going to do that. We're going to add it in by physical IP address. So click on IP, device name. Let's give it NVR demo room. It's an IP address, not by DDNS. The IP address is 192.168.3.30. So that'll match the IP address of the NVR that you're trying to connect to. Port 8001 in this instance, but the default is 8000. 
admin and the password. Transmission we're going to leave as TCP. We're going to bring the mainstream in, but I can force substream or third stream. Now, if you're using Height Connect um, and the enable stream verification is on, you need to enable that and type in that uh, verification key there. Or if you're not using Height Connect, but you're still using the video encryption key that's set on the NVR DVR, again, appropriately fill in that encrypt stream key. If we're not using that because I am using Height Connect, but I've actually turned that function off. Area name. I'm going to give it a new area name so the NVR will go into that area. <clears throat> so DVS 4K NVR. Click save. Device manufacturer is Height Vision by default, but there are other options available. Channel number. Now you can type in effectively anything, but if I type in 101, which is the first channel of that NVR, we're not using a stream media server. If I click next, you can see. I've got all of these appropriate channels that I can select. So I can select channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Let's just select all the channels that I want. Then you can add numerous NVRs, DVRs. We're not limited to the amount you can add. It's all about the decoding capacity that limits what we can see. So click add in there. So you can see now they're all of the cameras I just added in from this NVR. And I can close that down. Now I can add another one in. So I can add in device name DVR and then I can go 192.168.3.20. So it's a DVR. For 8000, device name is admin. Same mainstream, add a new area, and we're going to call this the DVR, DVS. Click save, channel number 101. Click next, and again, one, just two channels one to four, because that's all that's added. Click OK. So I've got my DVR and my NVR here, okay? So happy so far? Okay, so what I can do now is to permanently set this video up. So like using a web browser, we're just dragging and dropping cameras over. So expand my 4K NVR, and we're gonna drag and drop a camera into there. You will see that screen will change there to show me RTSP interaction failed. So. Let me stop this and I'll go through that RTSP interaction failed in a minute. If I use a DVR and drag that channel in there, you can see straight away the cameras come up. Now if I highlight this video pane here, along the bottom, we can choose a video layout. So let's make it a nine way split, three by three, nine way. That now puts that into a nine way split. I can simply drag and drop my cameras into here as required to make up my display. So you can see there, four images displayed on that, uh, from the DVR onto my video wall. I can use, expand this and then drag another camera up into there, but you'll get the RTSP intersection failed. Okay, so let me just stop that one there. Uh, we don't, well, we don't have to stop that actually. I can delete all windows by doing that or just stop it. So let me just bring up the web address of that NVR. Okay, so on the NVR, that has the RTSP intersection. This is a little thing you need to be aware of. So make sure you can log in first. That's the main cause, cause of the failure. So we'll just check my credentials and my credentials are right. On the NVR DVR, Couple of things to note, under configuration, and then under security, RTSP authentication, change the digest basic, and click save. That's an, um, one of the first things I would look at. And again, under security service, if you've got stream encryption enabled, turn it off and save, and make sure that doesn't cause any errors, because you know you're isolating the issue. So we're happy that the login credentials work. Now this is a little quirk on some of the NVRs that you need to be aware of. When I add the NVR in, again, so we've deleted it, we're going to re-add it. So device name, nice little 
work around or a nice little thing to show you using the same set of details 8001 admin so we know the login credentials are correct DS NVR channel number so if I just put one and click next you can see it doesn't give you all of the channels so you need to put 101 in now the first 32 channels when you go to add one of these 9600 um, devices in which this device is it's got 1 to 32 now they're not actually used on a on the first 1 to 32 cameras aren't actually in use on this 96 series NVR so let's select all and click OK and it will add the device in so now and the DVS NVR, you can see I've added it to the same area, but by mistake. So if I now, so if I add in this camera, drag and drop it in into the window, and you'll see that appear on there. Let's make this a four-way split. So again, I can add another camera in from that same DVR, and it comes up on that screen. If I add camera channel one of the NVR into that, it'll come up as the RTSP intersection failure, as you can see on that screen. If I select camera 33 on the NVR and drag and drop it in, that is camera one on that NVR. So you can see that has now appeared. That is actually camera one on this NVR. And again, if I use camera 34, that's camera two. So one thing you need to be aware of that we ha that has caught other people out in the past, that it is on these 96 series, if you add all the channels in, one to 32 are effectively um not not available not in use so you can for instance once you've added them in click save either ignore them on the list or i can highlight that and click delete yeah and i can delete all of the ones that aren't used like so all the way up to 32 i'm not going to do more of them but then that takes the ones you can't use out of it so you can see all of the other channels are there so again if i select the camera so 36 for instance and drag and drop it in make it a 16 way split because don't forget the 6901 the maximum split is 16 way highlight it four by four and then it's a case of dragging and dropping those images in as required mix and match no camera on that channel yeah yeah and then back up to the DVR one two three so effectively I've set up my decoder it's displaying the maximum 16 devices that I can display on this device now if you remember a lot of these cameras are hd images so using that auto auto chain stream type has brought in the substream of these devices and therefore allowed me to reach the maximum of 16 way split if i didn't have that selected under configuration it would have stopped and said no resource a long time ago because i would have pulled in the main stream from the camera and therefore been too resource intense i can actually save this view now so save as Dave demo room and click OK that has now saved as a view that I can play from this um, web browser so it's a preferential view to me so if I click stop and click delete all windows yes and just drag uh, this one in so we have a, a single camera view so say that one there click save as um, Dave demo 2 Click save so you can see there I've got two that I've actually selected so if I click stop delete all windows yes 
click on that one and click play. That will bring up that camera. Well, if I highlight this one and click play, it'll switch over to that one. So it's a really simple way of saving the views, adding the devices in, and then setting your layout as required on this device here. It's as simple as that. What will happen is if the decoder reboots, it will then show the last known view. It'll bring that back through. I mean, you can have multiple views set in here and then log in and change them as required. Or you can simply set up the view anywhere up to the desired view that's required. Uh, up to, you know, from a one camera up to a 32 channel, 36 view um, per screen. So if I had four monitors, I would simply set that as monitor one, monitor two, monitor three, monitor four. So it's as simple as that. So HMI one, VJ one, and BNC one. But these would be representative of your um, monitors. So video wall, so HMI one, VJ one, BNC one. So if I wanted a camera to show here on the BNC output, I could do that, and that would decode it onto the BNC output as a CVBS output quality. So it literally is as simple as I just showed you, drag and drop, show the image, and it loads as simply and as quickly as that. And that is all I need to show you on the decoder with the web browser. And not only can you stop the video, save it, set the layout there, I can actually auto refresh it and cycle it. So auto refresh. And you can even do the sticker bottom, but that's a, something we'll do on a separate thing because that'll just confuse everybody. But it's as simple as that. Set up the decoder, drag and drop it. If you've got a permanent video wall that you're only going to show on the same cameras, a really cost-effective way without using Hike Central or a keyboard is to use this method and just web browse in, add your back-end devices, drag and drop, save that as a view, and walk away. It's as simple as that. So you've just got the cost of the decoder and obviously the time spent to set it up. Hopefully that's answered all your questions. I will show you quickly from a uh, touchscreen keyboard perspective how you can add a decoder into a joystick and then use the joystick to send that to a video wall because it's just as important that you can interact with a joystick as well. And then obviously how that would work at Hike Central. Okay, so if you want to watch the joystick, stay tuned. Other than that, you can leave now. Okay, so we've got a DS1600KI keyboard, so you can see there, that's the keyboard. So we're just mimicking the interface on that to this HDMI monitor, so standard function, which will allow me to show you how, it, how to add a decoder in and how that operates. So it's as simple as this. Type in your credentials here and click login. So top right hand side, burger menu, select device. Select this quick add function here and it will scan the network for all available devices, but we're just looking for the decoder, which will probably be near the bottom. 6901, there we go, so the 6901 decoder. So select that and click add, username, password, Save, the device has come up. So click on that and then it's all there uh, saved. Okay, click on the camera tab and we can see all of our cameras that we've added in from our NVR DVR there. So we're happy with that. And I can select another device and add that appropriately to the keyboard. Go back to live view. So this is the live view interface. Now I can select add on here and simply from the list Select the camera by double clicking on it and it'll show me that within the keyboard. So that's the local keyboard control, so we're happy with that. Um, but I'm going to stop the view on that. Burger menu, video wall, brings up the video wall, so HDMI, VGA and the BNC output there. So we're going to select the HDMI output and um, from the toolbox icon up there, we can now select, I can select the large, oh sorry. I can select split. I need to put a camera in there, I apologize. So from here, first we need to select the camera. So highlight that 6901 from the list, put a camera in there. 
So you can see there, camera decoding on there. And this is a camera now decoding on that video wall. So still nice and simple. Now, if I select this window, select the toolbox, select the split, and put that to a nine way split, you can see now that's a nine way split. And it's now a nine way split on there. So it's nice and straightforward, very reactive, very quick. Now, all I need to do is highlight another square. So come out of that, highlight a square, highlight a camera. Scroll through. It's really as simple as this. You can see there, nine squares occupied, and then the monitor's like that. I've chosen a camera that's not there, but you get the idea. So it's as simple as touch screen from the keyboard to change that decoder video wall. If it's a PTZ, all I need to do is select which square is the PTZ, and for instance, the color view PTZ, so internal panel view number eight there. So I selected that, and then with the joystick, I can move the joystick. And you can see that PTZ is very reactive to what I'm doing there. So it's really, really as simple as that. And that's how you use a keyboard with a decoder plus a video wall locally. So hopefully you get the idea. It's very, very simple, very interactive for your customer, uh, and it will solve a lot of problems. Great for control rooms. Um, well, or just a security guard, to be honest. So it takes away the PC and the NVR, and it makes their interaction very, very simple with a monitor. So hopefully you've learned something. Please, please, please don't forget to download the DVS app. Hashtag real installers if you're using us on social media. And thank you for Toshiba for sponsoring our channel. And we will be back next week for another how-to video. Until then, stay safe, and we'll see you next week for another how-to video. Thanks, everyone.